Please get your authorized version of the scriptures, commonly referred to as the King James Version. Please get your copy of the authorized version and please read along with me today, word for word, verse by verse of what we will be reading today. Be a Berean, search the scriptures daily whether these things be so. Read along with me. Read along with me. Read along with me too because the mouth goes quicker than the brain sometimes. So. I want to thank all of you who, uh, for your prayers and for your encouragement and for your help. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and even on to those of you, my enemies, who literally, and there are some of my enemies who wish I would just go home to be with the Lord. I wouldn't mind that, to be honest with you. But I'm here. And I have been given things to do. The least of which is to, know, to annoy you, you, who manipulate and use soft people who are actually seeking the Lord. I hope you burn hot. I really do. You vile creep. But anyway, thank you to all of you for your prayers. I'm not out of the woods yet. You know, when you um, live your life as a devil, as a lost man, and you do things to your body that... It's also a testimony of how great God created uh, man's body. And how durable man's body is with all the poison that we put into it, you know. But uh, anyway, I just wanted to acknowledge that. And thank you. Thank you. There is, <laughs> during this time, we've got a whole bunch of stuff um, coming. Lord willing. Lord willing. This today, Friday the 22nd, is actually the first time all this week that I've actually felt felt pretty decent yesterday, but this is actually the first time this whole week that I've actually felt <laughs> normal, the new normal, you know, <laughs> but uh, with a, quite a bit of stuff that we got, got to address this one thing asked, um, asked by, uh, asked by a beloved brother. You know, um, I'm going to die childless, and that, that's fine. That's that boo-hoo for me. But uh, if there was anyone who, if I were to have a son, if there was anyone who I would say, this is who I would want my son to be like. There's actually two. That the other... Um, who I love dearly is looking towards the wrong light. Anyway, I'm going to be answering this question. And the question is about education. Education. Education, learning, teaching, and stuff like that. Number one, I am not against education or being or learning or anything like that. I'm not. I am not. I'm not. But what I am against is who and how and what is being taught and who is doing the teaching. Now you have to remember, um, when I speak to you about education and teaching, that kind of stuff, this American educational system is Jesuit controlled. And I will say to you, I don't think there is any education and educational system on this earth that is not controlled by the Jesuit order. Okay, I don't believe that for a second. I believe all the public, 
private schools of higher learning that you will go to throughout the entire world. Excuse me. It's controlled by the Jesuit order. I don't believe that there isn't one that is out there that isn't. Okay? At least slightly influenced. Okay? Uh, one moment, please. One moment. Excuse me. I am not against education, like I said, but what I am against is what is being taught and who is doing the teaching. And you have to remember, like I said, like I said, I do truly believe that every single institution there is on this planet is in one way or another influenced by the Jesuit order. Okay? And like I said, you have to remember, when I say that to you, I come from the aspect of America, which is a joke okay the educational system in America is a joke it is probably different in your nation okay and I'm sure it is and praise the Lord for that okay in some nations um, it is mandatory for children mandatory you're going to go to a public school or something like that and the question is well do we break the law do we not send those children to the school systems and they'll go to Romans chapter 13 it's like well you're supposed to obey every ordinance of man that is a different context you have to remember that that's for the um, uh, for doing things you know that's talking about uh, doing you know rewarding evildoers for their evil and that kind of stuff it does kind of work within the frame of that but remember what are they teaching your children? I don't care what nation you are in under heaven. What are they teaching your children? Hmm? You know, when I'm out like walking Zena or something like that, when I, whenever I get a chance, I will talk to children. And one of the first things I always ask these children, um, what did you learn in school today? What are they teaching you? Around here in America, at least, they're being taught evolution. They're being taught this woke nonsense. They're being taught um, uh, gender confusion. Okay? They're being taught about sexuality. They're not being taught how to uh, seek the Lord. They're not being taught true science as found in the authorized version of the scripture. Their morals come from themselves. Now, granted, I, I hope in other nations under heaven, it's not as bad as it is in America. But it doesn't matter in what nation you are in under heaven. Like I said, the Jesuit order is there one way or another. Now, I am not telling anyone that they should disobey the law. But when it comes to the teaching of your children, who's going to teach them? The Jesuits or the Lord through you? And if you don't believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you got bigger problems. But, Turn in your authorized version of the scriptures and go to Exodus chapter 4. We are going to have a, a small look at this. Focusing on teach. Okay? <laughs> and remember, you know, the Lord will ordain man to teach, to exhort, to rebuke with all long suffering and doctrine. Okay, you got to remember that. Unlike what little stupid head Christy Burke would say. Okay? But, um... This is going to be a, a kind of an interesting thing, I, I think, and hope for some of you. Exodus chapter 4, we want verses 10 on to verse 17. And we are going to, this is the very first appearance of the word. So keep that in mind. So pay attention. Read along with me. And Moses said unto the Lord, O Lord, I am not eloquent, neither heretofore. Nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. Who am I to be able to teach anyone? Who am I? 
Lord, you know, come on, you want me to do this? Check this out. And the Lord said unto him, Who? Who hath made man's mouth? Or who maketh the dumb? Dumb means not being able to speak. And deaf, or the seeing, or the blind. Have not I the Lord? Now therefore, check this out. Go, and I will, you know what you do? You get your, get your little pen, circle this. I will be with thy mouth. And, you see that? Don't, don't look at me, look at the scripture. And teach thee what thou shalt say. Okay? So, the very first appearance of the word teach in any form. It's right there. Look at that. Don't look at me. Look at the scripture. Look at that verse. Now therefore go, and I will. Who's the I will? It's not Satan. Okay? With his five I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. Okay? It's not you. Who is it? The Lord, our Father, our God, Jesus Christ. Okay? Now therefore go, and I will be with thy mouth, and teach thee what thou shalt say. So the very first appearance of the word teach in any form is what? What is it, and who is it related on, there unto? Yeah. Let's continue. Okay? And he said, O oh my Lord, send, I pray thee, by the hand of whom thou wilt send. What does that mean? Like, oh Lord, if you got to, sure, but, I, you know, I not just send someone else. Check this out. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. <laughs> Stop. Look at verse 11. And the Lord said unto him, Who hath made man's mouth? The Lord is assuring Moses. It's like, dude, you're going. I'm not going to force you, but I want, I really want you to do this. <laughs> I'm going to be with you. I'm going to give you what you need so you can help others, so you can teach, and so that you can, so I can use you to guide others onto me. Okay? I'm going to be the source. I am everything to you. Okay? That's what the Lord is telling Moses. Okay? And Moses is like, oh, fine, but can you send someone? And the Lord's like, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. And he said, is not Aaron the Levite thy brother? I know that he can speak well. See, Moses was so concerned about speaking, right? And yes, we ought to. But see, I would rather, I would rather hear um, um, a sermon or whatever from someone who splutters and mumbles and stumbles than some of these well-refined preachers. I, you know... You know, it's like you, you, you try to listen to some of these Calvinist guys, you know, with their eloquence and their big words. It's like, dude, you, you speak English, but you and I don't speak the same language. I've seen some videos by some youngins out there who, who I, you know, are they saints? I don't know, but, they, you know, what they're saying is pretty decent. And it's like, you know, like me, mispronouncing and struggling with pronunciation. They, they skip groups, and it's like... I can hear that. I can I can listen to that. Because it's from the weak and beggarly things that the Lord has chosen. Chosen, excuse, see? <laughs> chosen to confound the wise. Okay? And also, behold, he cometh forth to meet thee. And when he seeth thee, he will be glad in his heart. And thou shalt speak unto him and put my, and put words in his mouth. And here it is, look at that. I will be with thy mouth and with his mouth and will teach you what ye shall do. So the whole concept of being instructed, of being educated, stems from where? Come on. 
You know the answer to that. Okay? And we see here, okay, the Lord saying, I'm going to teach you, but we see what? Him utilizing man to do so. That's just the way he's, he's done it. Okay? You know, oh, hold on. Let's, let's finish this up. And verse 16, and he shall be thy spokesman unto the people, and he shall be, even he shall be to thee instead of a mouth, and thou shalt be to him instead of God, and thou shalt take this rod in thine hand wherewith thou shalt do signs. So we see the whole inception, the whole concept, the whole beginning thereof of teach, according to this text, stems from where? Come on. Yes. Yes. Okay? Now, right away you might be saying, well, well what about surgeons and stuff? Okay. Dude, dude. Use a little common sense here, please. Okay? If the Lord has called an individual to cut you open so he can remove your spleen, or you got some kind of cancer in you to be removed, Okay, you look back in uh, history, um, there were surgeries done, okay? Don't, don't think that ancient man was ignorant, okay? That's one of the common misconceptions, okay? Obviously, if you are to, called of the Lord to be taught how to be a surgeon, to be a doctor, okay? If someone's going to be poking around in this body... But yeah, you want them to know what they're doing. You don't take your vehicle to a, to, a, to a pizza maker. It's like, okay, fix up my car for me. I don't know what I'm doing, okay? But there again, there again, you run into the, the thing about the, the Jesuits and how they control all education, I believe. That includes the medical field, Okay? All right. In that respect, what do you do? The Lord could obviously and definitely give you what is needed. But as we see here, the Lord has ordained it that he will teach through man. He can teach himself. We're going to look at that. But with things like, you know, being a doctor, come on. Come on. Yes. 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 Okay. If you're going to be a doctor some formal education will be necessary. Okay, so you can at least, oh, that what is that? Oh, you mean that's not a toe? Oh, you mean that's his kidneys? Okay, come on, come on. Or a vehicle, you know, repairing vehicles. <laughs> it's like, no, that's not a radiator, okay? You know what I'm saying? Okay, you know what I'm saying? But here's the thing. You look in history. You look in the scriptures. You know, the apostles were considered what? Ignorant and unlearned men, but they had been with Jesus. Hmm? Did the apostles, did people in old times go to a school in order to get employment? No. Valid argument. Well, what about today? Yeah, I, I, I get that. Here in America today, you need a certificate, at least here in McHenry County, Illinois, with its well-known Nazi-esque health department, okay, well-known, um, infamous. McHenry County Health Department is infamous, okay, it really is. You can look that up if you want to, okay. They are infam infamous for their Nazism, okay. In order to get a job and to maintain a job at McDonald's, you know, flipping a burger, you need a certificate, okay. I understand it's hard. Brother, you don't need a formal education in order to provide. Look at me. Look at me. It's like, yeah, look at you. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Okay? You don't need it. Is it a help? If you're going to be a doctor. Okay, yeah. Come on, common sense here. Okay? If you're going to fix cars. Okay, if you're going to be building buildings, it might help that you know certain things and go there specifically for those things. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. Okay? But see, the basic premise of modern education is contrary to God. Okay? Contrary to God. Even you devils know that because you're part of it. Okay? Even you know that. All right? All right? Now go to Psalm 94. Psalm 94. Okay? Psalm 94. And personally, I personally, son, if I were in your nation, I, I'm not saying for any of you to do this, but if I were in that position, and you were my son, and it came up, well, you got to send your son to one of our schools. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. I'm not saying for you to do that. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. And I would trust on the Lord. Because, you know, before we go to Psalm 94, if you get, you know, go to Romans chapter 13. Because, uh, you know, we've talked, and I can't remember what video it was about, or what video it was, okay? I, that's a problem, okay? I'm trying to remember, you know, I get emails, and it's like, I've talked about that. It's like, what video was it, okay? Okay, but, you know, you go to Romans chapter 13, okay? Let's read. Verses um, uh, 1 on to uh, verse 9, okay? Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. For there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Yes, yes. And remember, the powers that are, that are ordained here in America and in your nation is there for what? Judgment. Okay, because there is not a godly nation under heaven right now. Okay, don't deceive yourself in thinking that there is. Even those of you who live in merry old England. Okay. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. So see, you got to send your kids to a public school so they can be deceived by Jesuits and learn about uh, evolution and, and be taught against God. Not talking about how to open up a human. Uh, excuse me. Not uh, not going to a school. I'm not talking about going to a school to open up the body of a man, mankind. Excuse me. Okay. Or how to repair a uh, a vehicle. No. Basic everyday building block education. Okay. They come to this, well, see, you got, no, keep reading, okay? For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. Is it good that you send your children off to a school, even if required by law, to a school where they're going to be taught contrary to God in a system, in a basic, basic, a subculture which is against God and taught and is taught in a sexualized manner. Is that good? Well, when they come home, I'll tell them the truth. That, that child is going to be so conflicted. You're going to have a time on your hands, aren't you? Aren't you? Hmm? Let's keep reading. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon them that do with evil. Well, it's evil to keep your kids from school. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, pal. Hmm? The school systems here in America, and I don't care where you are in your nation too, teach contrary to God. They teach them evolution. 
They teach them that they came as a sniveling piece of snot out of, a, out of the water over uh, trillions of years ago. That's contrary to God. So I said, not actually what's being addressed here, but can be, yes, be in this context, yes. But see, what is good? There is only one that is good, that is God. And evolution is not good. It is evil. It's stupid. It is not of God. Here in America, these kids are being taught evolution. Okay? I beg your crudeness. I beg your pardon for this crudeness. Why on earth is a 12-year-old child being taught about sexual things in a school setting? when the father and the mother should be the one informing their children through the scriptures of that. You tell me. How is that? How is that not evil? When you see a 12-year-old speaking to you in almost a pornographic manner, it's like you want to smack them in the mouth. It's like, child, where did where'd you... Of course, where'd they learn it? Where'd they learn it? Why? Because the parents hand off the children to be trained by Jesuits. And this is what they're being taught. Train up a child in the way they should go. When they are old, they will not depart from it. This generation, in general, I believe is the generation that is going to be left behind, obviously. That, well, left behind, meaning that they're the generation that is going to come to power to be part of that system of Antichrist. Okay? Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's keep reading. Verse 5. Wherefore ye must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. For this... For for this cause pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers attending continually upon this very thing. Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Owe no man anything, don't be in debt, but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Now, this is a very important verse that when people bring this up, they don't like to go this far in reading it. Okay? For this, thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. And if you're not using the scriptures, thou shalt not bear false witness. That's not in a Bible. Okay? Thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in the saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Okay? It's a reference on to, you know, like police officers and stuff like that. But also, where do you learn these truths that Paul is talking about? Aren't children today taught, if it feels good, do it? Hmm? Aren't children being taught it's up to you whether or not you want to abort an unborn child? Hmm? Isn't it taught to children today that a little, it's a little white lie, it don't hurt? Aren't children taught to covet? See, the context lands itself onto to like the police and stuff like that. But where do you learn these things? They ain't learning them from school, are they? Where do you tr learn that truth? Psalm 94, verses 8 on to verse 13. Understand ye brutish among the people and ye fools. The fool says in his heart there is no God. When will ye be wise? <laughs> he that planted the ear, shall not he hear? He that formed the eye, shall not he see? Shall he not see? Excuse me. He that chastiseth the heathen, shall not he correct? He that teacheth man knowledge, shall not he know? The Lord knoweth the thoughts of man. 
that there are vanity. What are we reading to? Verse 13. Blessed is the man whom thou chastenest, O Lord, and teachest him out of thy law. That thou mayest give him rest from the days of adversity, until the pit be digged for the wicked. Out of thy law. Here's the textbook for your children. You can learn science, math, history, okay? Everything we need is here, okay? If there's something like if your child is going, you want, wants to be a doctor, you can get other things. You can get other resources. The history that they're being taught today, okay? They, they tell you that Hitler was an atheist. Hitler was a Catholic. Why do they say that he was an atheist? To divert away from Catholicism. Okay? You know, here in America, now you gotta remember, brethren, children outside of America are being taught better than here in America. They are. But nonetheless, elsewhere in the world, the evolutionary thing is a global phenomena okay and if they are being taught anything of god who's the ones doing it it's the jesuits okay because you think well what about sending them to a christian school yeah are they taught how to rightly divide the word of truth they're taught one God and three persons. They're taught to just believe. I stand by that, son. You get your kids out of the schools. Okay? If you are conflicted with the legal ramifications, you, look at me, look at me, okay? All right, you need to talk to the Lord about that yourself. Okay, that's between you and the Lord. Okay, I am not telling you to go against it. But I will say, if I were wearing your shoes in a situation like that, I would put my hands in the, um, I would put everything in the hands of the Lord and trust on him. And be like, I don't care what you say. I'm not giving you my son. I'm not giving you my daughter to poison their mind with your filth. It ain't happening. Well, you're breaking the law. I don't care. That's my son. That's my daughter. You're not going to defile them. They are going to be taught by the Lord. Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Mem. Psalm 119, Mem. Oh, you don't know where Mem is? Verse 97 on to verse 104. Learn to decipher Psalm 119 according to the... the um, Hebrew letter, you know, like like right there. Okay, learn how to decipher Psalm 119 that way, okay? Psalm 119, men. Oh, how I love thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Thou, through thy commandments, hast made me wiser than mine enemies, for they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers. For thy testimonies are my meditation. Okay? I understand more than the ancients because they keep thy precepts. Now stop. Think about these older teachers today. And you have a child who is uh, at home learning through the scriptures, learning of the Lord, through the Lord, by you, through his word. 
the individual from Maine who's teaching his son at home, praise the Lord for it. Praise the Lord for it. That he is his son's teacher. Okay? Will never, ever say anything amiss against that individual for that purpose, for that reason. Not at all. I, I actually give him my respect for that. You know who I'm talking about. Because he's keeping it's like, my, my kid ain't going to this stuff. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> Amen. 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 And I'll tell you what. That little boy of his is going to be the epitome of right, of right here. Because what happens? You send it. I just, you've seen it. Remember, brother, I can only go off of the system that I'm aware of. But see, this crosses all lines. God is the one who educates through man. Okay? You got to remember that. You got to remember that. Do you really think? Come on now. Do you really believe that our Lord is okay with you sending a child who doesn't even know what side of the playpen smells worse, handing your child over to a system that is going to teach them that they are their own God, if it feels good, do it, and that you came from a piece of snot millions of years ago? You think God is okay with that? Come on now. Come on now. Come on. Well, brethren, sooner or later you got to put your foot down and take a stand for something. Verse 101. And see, because verses 97 on to verse 101, because, you know, you train up a child in the way he should go, he, he knows more than what? He knows more than the teachers. That, that boy of the individual from Maine I bet you that boy, when that boy reaches 12 years old, he comes across one of these, you know, evolutionary teachers with a $100,000 piece of paper on his wall. I bet you that boy bury that teacher. Why? Because that little boy is being brought up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. How are you raising your kids? Dependence upon a Jesuitical system breeds subservience. Enslaved obedience. Hmm? But see, because how this person loves his law and meditates on it day and night, all the day, and through thy commandments, the scriptures, okay, has made me wiser than mine enemies. Verse 101. I have refrained my feet from every evil way that I might keep thy word. And unto man, he said, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. I have refrained my feet from every evil way that I may keep thy word. I have not departed from thy judgments. For thou hast How sweet are thy words unto my taste, yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through thy precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. I hate Catholicism. I don't hate the Catholic. I hate Catholicism. I hate fake grace, sleazy believism. But I don't hate the individual who is ensnared thereby. I hate Calvinism, but I don't hate the Calvinist. See how this works? I hate every false way. 
I hate the educational system. But I don't hate those children. Especially when they're sent to a school when they, they, they don't even, like I said, they don't even know what side of the playpen smells worse. And you're going to send them off to the Jesuits. I'm not saying, but I am saying, if I were wearing your shoes, if I, Brad Paul Avenshine, were wearing your shoes, I would be like, it ain't happening. We're going to take your kid away from you. You try it. I'll take you with me. You try it. You try it. Someone comes here to hurt me or my wife. It's like, I'm going to hurt your wife, Brad. <laughs> you try it, pal. You try it. If I go, you're going to go with me. I can promise you that. But no. How many people do worse than that by sending them off to not die physically, but to die there? And what happens? And see, the Lord has not left people without witness. Of course, go to Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter, this is why the imperativeness of being in the book of Romans at least once a, once a month, okay? Romans chapter 1, okay? Verses 19 out of verse 23, okay? Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shewed it unto them. How do you think the complexity of the leaf, of the of the plant, of your own body, the retina, of the eye. How would you think that evolved? And, and unfortunately, there are some of you who do. Unfortunately, okay? But no, no. You know, and um, right here, verse 20, okay? For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. You have to be educated to be that stupid to think that this evolved from millions and billions of years ago. Okay? You have to be that educated. You have to be educated. Okay? Being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Godhead. Okay? Jesus Christ is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Spirit, the Holy Ghost. Soul, God the Father. Body, the Word made flesh. Okay? You and I are made in the image of God in that we are spirit, soul, and body. You want proof that God exists? Huh? You. Soul, spirit, soul, and body. And see, that's the perverseness of the, the Trinity. Oops. <laughs> okay? The Trinity teaches you what? That God is three persons. No. God is one. Spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Because... Pick your part. Pick your part. The new normal. <laughs> Verse 21. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Who would they glorify? Keep reading. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened, professing themselves to be wise, ye are your own gods. They became fools, who say in their heart there is no God, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, the first thing that is mentioned, and to birds and the four-footed beasts and creeping things. 
you got to remember too, Job, Job 36, just one verse. Job 36, verse 22. Just one verse. Behold, God exalteth by his power. Who teacheth like him? Okay? What is that? What is it? It's fine. Looks like a, like a bug or something. <laughs> Isaiah, <laughs> Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah chapter 9. Verses 13 on to verse 17. For the people turneth not on to him that smiteth them, neither do they seek the Lord of hosts. You know, God will allow things to happen in your life to get your attention so you look to him. You can read Amos chapter 4 on your own time, okay? You know, Lord will allow you to get on a sinking submarine to get to strip away all things from yourself so that you have no other option but to consider him, okay? Therefore the Lord will cut off from Israel head and tail, brush and branch and rush in one day. The ancient and honorable, he is the head. And the prophet that teacheth lies, he is the tail. A prophet was some a mouthpiece for the Lord. Okay? And today we prophesy by speaking the word, the scriptures, onto you. There are the Old Testament prophet does not exist today, no matter what the wicked charismatics want you to believe. Okay? Because we have the revealed canon of Scripture, the perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration, Word of God, the authorized version. Okay? And we prophesy today by the Lord. Number one, you've got to be truly really saved. And the Lord within you will speak to you through the Word. That's how we prophesy today. But look at that verse. Okay? And the prophet that teacheth lies, these teachers, who are they a mouthpiece for? The government. And when they are teaching children evolution, who are they a mouthpiece for? I'll let you figure that one out. Okay? For the leaders of this people cause them to err. And they are, that are led of them are destroyed. Can you hear that? Isn't that a delicious irony, huh? Sirens going off in the background if you can't hear them. Okay? Therefore the Lord shall have no joy in their young men, neither shall have mercy on their fatherless and widows. For everyone is an hypocrite and an evildoer. Every mouth speaketh folly. For all this his anger is not turned away. But his hand is stretched out still. And then you go to Isaiah chapter 48. Isaiah chapter 48. Verses 16 on to verse 19. Come ye near unto me. Hear ye this. I have not spoken in secret from the beginning. From the time that it was, there am I. Okay? And now... The Lord God and His Spirit has sent me. Hold your place right there. Romans chapter uh, 10. Romans chapter 10. Just want to touch on this. Romans chapter 10. <laughs> Romans chapter 10. Uh, no, uh, where is it? Verses 8. On the verse 10. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Go back to Isaiah 48. Come ye near unto me, hear ye this. 16 on to verse 19. I have not spoken in secret from the beginning. 
from the time that it was, there am I. And now the Lord God and his Spirit has sent me. Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee to profit. Profit, not profit. Thank you, brother. Who leadeth thee by the way that thou shouldest go. Oh, that thou hadst hearkened to my commandments. Then had thy peace been as a river, and thy righteousness as the waves of the sea. Thy seed also had been as the sand, and the offspring of thy bowels like the gravel thereof. His name should not have been cut off nor destroyed from before me. Hmm. John 7, this one verse. John 7, but what has happened? What has happened? Instead of going to the Lord... People have been taught to look that that's not a degree or anything, but they have been taught to idolize a piece of paper. They have been taught to idolize knowledge that is earthly, sensual, devilish. Hmm? How many of you have heard of this? of things where you run across people who are totally qualified to do a job, but because they don't have a piece of paper, they're rejected. Hmm? How many of you have heard about it? I've have been given testimony of that about, you know, a guy, he grew up on a farm learning how to do all this stuff and learning how to do that, but he didn't go to like a, a, a Jesuit college to get a piece of paper. He could work circles around everyone else, but yet he didn't have that piece of paper. See, that's what has been instilled in these people. Okay, Just because you got a piece of paper, don't mean you got any brains. I have to quote Mr. Ruckman. Okay, <laughs> okay, doesn't. Where does true knowledge come from? The Lord. But see, it's been twisted. And what happens? John seven one verse, verse fifteen. And the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? Speaking of God the Father himself, Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Okay? Saying that of God. And remember, they took knowledge of Peter and John and James, I think it was, because they had been with Jesus. Okay? God ordained education. And wants children to be educated by father and mother, by him, through father and mother and his word. You want to be a doctor? Okay, learn how to dissect a, a body. Okay, you want to learn how to fix a car? Okay, like I said, you don't take your Buick to a pizza maker who, has, who can make a pizza but can barely change a tire. It's like, okay, fix it. Okay? Okay. Again, you don't go to a mechanic with uh, someone who needs their spleen removed. It's like, okay, let me put them on the jack and let me get the torque wrench out. Okay? Okay? No, no, no. Okay? No. All right? Well, Brad, you, you believe that all education is Jesuit influence at least? Yes, I do. Think about this, when it comes to the medical thing, you look up in history about how the Jesuits tortured with the inquisitions, okay, especially the Spanish inquisitions. Uh, the Jesuits were masters of torture. The Jesuits know the bodies of mankind. They really do. They really do. Okay? They do. They do. They don't know the body of man like God does, but, you know. And I'm not justifying that because also you do have to remember a lot of the Hebraic people. And you, you can look this all up. Um, a lot, and There was a time here, at least in America, where the majority of the doctors were Hebraic. Okay? Put that into your pipe and smoke it. 
okay but also right now it has fluctuated and you can look this up on your own uh, that a lot of the doctors today are of Ishmaelic descent okay okay keep that in mind keep that in mind but see we're talking about the stepping stone of the education okay that's what we're addressing all right yes if you're gonna be a surgeon learn what you need to know what you're doing okay you're gonna work on cars yes you need to know what you're doing okay you don't need to be educated as what you consider education to learn how to you know your father teach you it's like okay this is how you operate a, a hammer a chainsaw a sawzall okay you know mathematics okay you got a problem with mathematics like I do hey you can get a book on math okay uh, incidentally mathematics is a part of scripture okay there's a dear brother of ours who um, who is really into the numeric uh, numeric system within scripture and there is a well, obvious system of numerics numbers mathematics within scripture so you can learn math through scripture okay i mean you really can all right all right but what has happened see truth wisdom knowledge Satan, through education, has taken it away, tried to have taken it away from the one who has given it. Because ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And what has happened? Isaiah 30. Isaiah 30, verses 8 on to verse 17. Now go. Write it before them in a table, and note it in a book that it may be for the time to come forever and ever that this is a rebellious people lying children children that will not hear the law of the Lord which say to the seers see not and to the prophets prophesy not unto us right things speak unto us smooth things prophesy deceits like evolution how many genders are there it's okay to be a sodomite it's okay to covet. Like Carlin said, don't mess with covetousness because it creates jobs. We think now, George. Get you out of the way, and there it is. There it is. Turn aside out of the path. Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. Wherefore, thus saith the Holy One of Israel, because ye despise this word, Scripture, and trust in oppression and perverseness and stay thereon. Oppression. Like, like you even in your thing, your question, brother. You know, your question note, denotes a little bit that there's an oppression. You can't do anything unless you go the legal route right think about that okay you might ask well can't God use the system of education that exists sure but here's the thing is that system of education contrary to him <laughs> come on of course he could do, he can do anything but there again I don't care what nation you are in under heaven I don't care. You're being taught evolution. You're being taught that you're God. If it feels good, do it. You are okay. You're okay. I'm okay. Everyone's okay. That's what you're being taught. That's what your kids are being taught. I don't care where you are under heaven. Excuse me. I don't care. That's the facts. Do you think God is for that? Could he use it? Sure, he can do anything. Is he for it? Was God for the Holocaust? Even though he allowed it? And was there through it? 
Doth not our God delight in mercy? Hmm? How many of you, you sleazy believists, will point to that one, huh? But if you mess around with the Lord, and you want to be contrary to him, and believe that you are above him, Therefore, verse 13, this iniquity shall be to you as a breach ready to fall, swelling out of a high wall, whose breaking cometh suddenly at an instant. And he shall break it as the breaking of a potter's vessel that is broken in pieces. He shall not spare, so that there shall not be found in the bursting of it a shirred to take fire from the hearth, or to take water withal out of the pit. For thus saith the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, In returning and rest shall ye be saved. In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. And ye would, and ye would not. But she said, no, for we will flee upon horses. Therefore shall ye flee, and we will ride upon the swift. Therefore shall they pursue you. Therefore shall they that pursue you be swift. One thousand shall flee at the rebuke of one. At the rebuke of five shall ye flee, till ye be left as a beacon upon the top of a mountain. And as an ensign on the hill. Check your margin there if you have one. I'm sure there's a reference to Deuteronomy 28 and 32 in there somewhere. Okay? But you see verse 16 about the horses? Look at uh, chapter 31, just verse 1. Woe to them that go down to Egypt, the world, for help, and stay on horses and trust in chariots because they are many. And then horsemen, because they are very strong. But look not unto the Holy One of Israel, neither seek the Lord. Okay? Isaiah 3, 12, just one verse. Isaiah 3, 12. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. O oh, my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err and destroy the way of thy paths because ye are your own gods. Jeremiah 23. Okay. Jeremiah 23. Verses 21 on to verse 22. And what about these, you know, you can make arguments while it used. See, and this is something that a lot of people, you know, the old ways we are to seek. What are the old ways? The ways is of Scripture, to live our lives in Scripture. Okay? Absolutely. Absolutely. But you have to remember, what are we living in right now? Okay? What once was right now isn't. And is not going to be until we get redeemed seven year time of the time of Jacob's trouble and our Lord Jesus Christ come back. We got a little ways to go yet. Okay? But the ones right now that are destroying mankind through the education system, especially America is a joke. Okay. Uh, Twenty Jeremiah twenty three twenty one and twenty two, interesting thing there. I have not sent these prophets yet they ran. I have not spoken to them yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel <laughs> and had caused my people to hear my words, not your feelings, not your philosophy. Then they should have turned them, them from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. Hey, I'm okay. You're okay. 
Just believe. Don't worry about it. You shouldn't. But hey, I'm okay. You're okay. We're all okay. You just believe. Just go ahead on and live like the devil. Wonder why I hate every false way? Jeremiah 3. Jeremiah 3. 12 on verse 15. Go! And proclaim these words toward the north, and say, Return thou, backsliding Israel, saith the Lord, and I will not cause mine anger to fall upon you. For I am merciful, saith the Lord, and will not keep anger forever. Isn't that great? The Lord's anger eventually will cease. Why do you think the scriptures say, Anger resteth in the bosom of fools? Only acknowledge thine iniquity, that thou hast transgressed against the Lord thy God, and hast scattered thy ways to strangers under every green tree. And ye have not obeyed my voice, saith the Lord. What are we reading to? 15. Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord, for I am married unto you. Different dispensation, but very interesting. And I will take you one of a city, and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion, Look at this, verse 15. Don't look at me, look at the book. And I will give you pastors, according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding, which is departing from evil. And the knowledge comes from where? A wisdom from the I will, the I am. Okay? Wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. Wisdom, the fear of the Lord. Understanding, departing from evil. Knowledge. You see how that works? But what ultimately is going on right now? We know the answer to this. We're almost done. Besides, you know, yesterday uh, I was actually finally, because I, I was down a couple of days. Granted, we had really rotten, lousy weather, of course, because we live in Illinois. But, um, you know, we had... Yesterday, I finally was able to get out and do a little, get a little exercise, and um, did that, <laughs> you know, overdid it a little bit, and was able to talk to uh, uh, my best friend, you know, but I, I overdid it, you know, and kind of was out and got great sleep. You needed to know that. But uh, 2 Timothy 3, verses 1 through 8. See, saints, we are the ones that are to be the thorn in their eyes. We, we are here. He who now letteth will let until he, the body of Christ, be taken out of the way. You and I are to be the thorns in their eyes. You know, about some of the enemies who wish I'd just go home and be with the Lord. Yeah, and well, I, <laughs> with certain of my enemies, I'm glad to irritate you. Absolutely. Okay, But remember, brethren, we have to take a stand for something. What are you standing for? Well, what does it matter? It's going to matter because when we get taken up and all chadez breaks loose, these people are going to have the memory of that testimony of the church, the saints. Don't you ever forget for one moment don't you ever forget of what your testimony may mean unto the Saul's that may be holding the coats. You don't know. So don't give up on that. And stop making excuses. Stop that. You know who's, who makes excuses? I know there's a difference between a reason and an excuse. I know that. But don't, don't use your reason as an excuse. And here, see this? Oh. I know you, a certain enemy of mine would like to do the other side, wouldn't you? Yeah. And I'd like to 
<laughs> Never mind. Never mind. Second Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 8. What's going on today? This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Covetous, first thing. Boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful and unholy. Yeah, why, why do you think the kids are being disobedient to their parents? Number one, because the parents aren't the one teaching them. But number two, uh, they're being taught that they evolved from snot to a monkey to them. They're being taught that mankind is nothing more than a um, highly modified monkey. It's not funny. Without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. And what is good? Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. For of, the, for of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women, laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts. Ever learning. And never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Talk to some of these kids. You know, like a couple of ones uh, um, last week, you know. Like, ah, oh, so you're out of uh, high school, huh? <laughs> it's like, probably going to college, right? Like, yeah, why? Well, that's what you do. Who said? Who said? Who said? Yeah, have God said? You get it? Finish this up with Chi uh, Titus chapter 2. You hear that? Beg your pardon. Kind of laboring to finish this, just so you know, but let's continue. Saints. As long as we're here, we're supposed to be shoveling coal to the burners to keep the lights on as the Titanic is floating. We are to be the thorns in the eyes of Rome. We are to be the shock to the system. And if we're going to go out, let us go out as the Lord would have us waiting for his glory, our hands held up, let's go, Lord. Even so, come, Lord Jesus, and let us be the ones to stand where no one else is standing. Well, no one else is standing. Look at Paul. huh? And my first answer, no man stood with me, but all forsook me. But the Lord stood with me. I'm not saying, son. I'm saying, though. And I know you do. I know you do. But let us never forget this, saints. But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine, rightly divided. Repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, 
in patience. Charity, self-sacrifice, and and patience. Yeah, I'm not a doctor either. <laughs> the aged women, likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh, becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much thing, much wine, teachers of good things. Who are the women te women teachers? Yeah, but who are the women supposed to be teaching? That they may teach young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands. Why? That the word of God be not blasphemed. What's his name? Scott? I believe you're a saint. I do believe you're a saint, Scott. You putting out your lovely help meet like that. Gotta watch it with that one, son. Okay? You don't watch these, but if you did, if you do, get a hold of me. Get a hold of me. Okay? But look, look at this. Have you ever seen one of these women that are near my age in their late 40s and they're trying to look like a whorish teenager today? Children are your oppressors and women rule over you. The beauty of the aged is the gray head. I have seen women as old as I am, skinnier than a rail, with fake implements, getting injected in the face, trying to look as if they're, what, what, what's the term, um, millennials themselves. And they're the ones that are supposed to teaching the young women what? What we just looked at. But the older want to live as whorish as they're... You see that, how it's all messed up? Young men likewise exhort to be sober-minded. In all things shewing thyself a pattern of good works, in doctrine shewing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity. Sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. Exhort servants to be obedient unto their own masters, and to please them well in all things, not answering again. Now, someone would look at this, it's like, well, what if my master wants me to do something that is contrary to God? Have you not been listening? Ought we ought to obey God rather than men? Well, it says, well, it says, stop trying, stop trying to justify yourself. Okay? Stop it. Stop that. See, that's one of the things that these filthy, uh, sleazy, believist devils do. They will go all around in circles to justify themselves. If you were truly saved, what a brother you would be. And I mean that. I don't like you. You know who I'm talking about. I don't like you. You don't like me. I respect you. You're the only one I do respect. Truly, you are the only one I do give any respect on. It doesn't mean that I would be saying kumbaya with you. But what a brother you would make. Anyway. Not purloining, but shewing all good fidelity or fealty. That they may adorn the doctrine of God our Savior in all things. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. Teaching us 
that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. What are the children being taught today? I don't care in what nation you are under heaven. What are they being taught? They're being taught contrary to this. If it feels good, do it. Don't mess with covetousness because it creates jobs. Looking for that blessed hope and the gracious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Alleluia. Who is the... You know, everyone says that the blessed hope is the redemption of the purchased possession. But of course it is. It's, it says that right there. But he, people... Yes, the blessed hope reference on the... Yeah, but of course. Of course. Of course. But Jesus Christ himself himself is the blessed hope. Don't separate those two. Don't do that. There are saints out there who, like, who for some reason, not because of anything, just, they just seem to do that. They try to separate the one from the other. That the redemption is its own event, but the redemption is Jesus Christ. Don't separate that, okay? Don't separate that. Watch out for that. Who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. And doesn't Christianity say you got to be like the world to win the world? These things speak and exhort. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort. I rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. Very quickly, every once in a while, I, <laughs> I uh, when walking Zena, no doubt, I have come across this young man, a big old dog, who's one of these emo things. You ever heard of that? Very effeminate, you know, different color, whatever. One of the most tragically sad looking individuals. Well, you're dressing like, I get it, but you know, I, you know, I, I, and the, the one time I've seen this young man with that big dog, that big dog, and, you know, it's like trying to keep Zena, you know, Zena, little dog, and most little dogs, they see a big dog, they have little dog syndrome where they go, ah, 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 you know, and the big dog is like, well, that's a marshmallow, okay, but, see, that's the point. They're being taught that express themselves in what God is clearly against. And I have never seen a more wretched in the visage and countenance individual as that young man that I've seen. And if they have a confidence, it's a confidence in fleshly things and of the world, which is coming to naught. So, that is going to be it for this video. <laughs> Thank you for your patience. This is the best I have felt this entire week. You know, when, when you got problems with wind, okay, um, y'all know by now that I, I put everything into this. Okay, this is what the Lord has called me to do. When you, the, the person you see, the person you see, if you were to go out there and run across me, not literally with the car, thank you, but when you were to come across me out there, this who you see is who you're going to see out there. Okay? And this is what the Lord has called me. Everything that you do unto the Lord, do it with all your might. Okay? 
And this is what the Lord has called me to do. So I do it with all my might. When my might ain't there and I try to do it, it's, 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 it's a disaster piece. Thank you for your patience. Even though you're not doctors. Even though a couple of you are, apparently, but whatever. Brother, I hope this might have answered. And brother, you know, questions, keep them coming. Um, some like I have, I'll answer you an email. This, this was a benefit for others. So, and hopefully too, I'll, uh, I, I got written down, you know, about, um, you know, the teaching one, about communion and stuff about our minds, which I talked about with uh, my best friend yesterday. But this took the precedence, so. Going to get this uploaded? Thank you. Thank you to all of you. And even you, my deadly enemies, who want me to go home. Not yet. Not yet. Uh, I have something to do. And besides, for a select few of you, at the very least, to irritate you. So. Thank you. We love you. Lord willing, keep everything on the up. Get back to on Monday. Lord, we'll, we'll see what happens. So, see you in the next video. Bye bye. Praise the Lord.